Hello, and welcome to Real Person Reviews. I'm Sam. What the fuck? And I'm a real person. And today I want to talk to you about Kirby's Dream Land 2 for the Game Boy. Uh, and up front here, just, uh, just want to remind you guys um, that uh, I also have a written review of this game that you can uh, look at before, uh, after, or just instead of the video review. Uh, you can go to www.thegravelpit.net or click on the link in the description to you know look at the look at the that to look at the that. I think that's all I really want to preface this with. So let's kind of kind of jump into here. So once again, I've been doing this whole Kirby thing out of order, which is totally stupid. But to give you a little bit of a background, this is actually the third Kirby game in the main series. Um, the first game, Kirby's Dream Land, was uh, released on the Game Boy, where we saw Kirby for the first time, and he went through these... It's a very linear game, you go through levels, and I'm sure I'll do a full review on this, but... We find out that Kirby can walk around, he can jump, he can fly, he can inhale enemies and shoot them out. And there are a few power-ups for him to get here and there to make him invincible or give him energy, this and that. Going through uh, these different stages with this catchy music and these cutesy graphics and these satisfying sound effects like m most Kirby games tend to have. Um, and uh, fighting some bosses along the way until ultimately, you know, defeating, beating the last boss being the game. I mean, it's... It's a pretty simple concept, and what we saw a lot of the basics of Kirby come out of here. Then Kirby's Adventure came out on the NES, and it was around, you know, it was a little late in the NES life cycle. Um, but this uh, game added, added color for one thing, because the NES was capable of that. Um, and uh, it had this overworld where you could go to these bunch of these different levels and some mini-games that you could do. And the big thing is that, um, oh, and there were secrets too, but the big thing was that Kirby got his... Uh, now, what he's now famous for, um, his copy ability, which allows him to inhale enemies and um, devour them, and then use their abilities as his own, um, which gave the game a lot of uh, character and variety, um, and there were all kinds of ways to use those strategically and for solving some of these puzzles to get to different pathways, get to these secrets, and just, you know, how to be the most efficient at the game. And it's just kind of fun to play around with them. So it was, a, it was an interesting thing that became kind of a staple. And then we have Kirby's Dream Land 2, which came out on the Game Boy again. And it's interesting because this kind of takes a lot of these ideas from Kirby's Adventure uh, while trying to put it uh, onto a system that's, you know, not quite as powerful as the NES. I mean, let's, let's face it. Um, and uh, a lot of it shows. A lot of it does feel like a combination of Kirby's Dream Land and Kirby's Adventure uh, all up into one. Um... You know, there's uh, actually, I mean, like, you know, they have the overworlds kind of made their appearance in here um, with the multiple levels to select, and you can go between the different worlds to go to these different levels as you please. There are some secrets for you to find in these levels, which will require you to be uh, very clever about uh, what, you know, what abilities you have in order to get to them, to find them, and to also obtain them. Um, and uh, there's actually color in the game as well. Um, if you play on a Super Game Boy... Or a Game Boy Color or a Game Boy Advance, then there's they'll add colors for you. So that's that's kind of a neat thing that it does also have that capability, which the first one really doesn't. Um, uh, plus, it also has the copy abilities, as were made famous back in Kirby's Adventure. Um, so a lot of it does kind of sound like, well, this is sort of like a watered down version of Kirby's Adventure, then, right? Similar kind of idea. I mean, different levels, but same kind of stuff. And for the most part, that's that's mostly true. But there are some different things in this game, and I think the thing that makes this game really unique is the introduction of these animal partners that you have. Um, which I believe also pop up in some of the other games as well. At least, you know, at least in Kirby's Dream Land 3, I think they popped up in uh, afterwards. But I think there might have been some other ones too. I'm not super clear. But I do know that this is where they came up first. Um, and there are three animal partners you have in here. There is a hamster, there is an owl, and there is a fish. And uh, um, the, the owl is, is kind of cool because it can fly around. It's really good at being very accurate at positioning in the air. The fish is really good at swimming around underwater, which is kind of awkward otherwise. And the hamster is... Well, the hamster's not that great. It doesn't do anything real special. I think it jumps about as high as Kirby does. Maybe it jumps higher... And I didn't realize it. It could be that. But it doesn't seem 
too different. Although, I guess each one of these does kind of act as its own, you know, kind of a shield because, the, you know, taking damage while on one of these animal helpers will, um... We're, we're just gonna... <sighs> guess I'll cut... I guess I'll cut it. Anyways... Like I was saying, each of these uh, animal partners does still at least kind of count as, you know, a, a shield. Um, sorry if I'm repeating that. <laughs> but, you know, like, they'll take damage uh, for you, and once their health runs out, then you're just back to being Kirby again. So, sorry if I repeated that, but Sirens put a whole dick in my ass, so. Um, the thing that makes these animal partners really unique, though, and gives them a really neat spin, um, is also that... Uh, when you have a copy ability, uh, while, you know, riding one of them, or, you know, whatever, however you want to put that, um, each one uses it differently. And they all use it differently than you use it as well, which I think is pretty interesting. Um, for an example, um, when Kirby has the fire ability, his attack will be just dashing across the screen in a fiery fashion. But, um, when you have the hamster... Um, he'll breathe fire, and when you have the owl, it will do this diagonally downward, like, dash thing, um, to try and swoop down on enemies, and, um, the fish will shoot out fireballs as projectiles, so each one uses these items a little differently, and you'll need to use, um, you know, the different animal partners in conjunction with those different, uh, those different copy abilities, especially if you want to um, get a lot, all those little secrets um, that you can collect. Uh, and uh, you might be wondering, what, what are these secret things? What, what, what is that about? The secrets are basically these items. I don't know what the hell they're supposed to be, honestly. But they're it's just an item, and each world contains at least uh, one of them. Um, and in one of the levels, you'll have to be... Um, have to have, you know, a specific animal friend with a specific uh, power... And uh, you'll have to use that to open up the the little section where the item is. And um, a lot of that can be trial and error. You have to go back and make sure you have the animal and the, and the power when you get there and, you know, what you're doing. Um, and once you get all of those, or if you do, then after your final fight with King DDD, you will then be um, challenged by uh, another character... Um, and you'll you'll fight the true final boss and get the good ending. Because if you don't, you'll get, uh, what's, I guess, what you would call a bad ending, because you didn't do all the things. Um, and, uh, that's why I'd want to do that. And, you know, I, I gotta say that I, I do like the game. I mean, it's kind of cool that it's a bit longer, it's more open, it has the whole copy ability thing, and, uh, color is kind of pretty, you know, you know I, I like the colorization, I like the catchy music, and the relatively easy and fun gameplay, the satisfying sound effects, all that good Kirby stuff, I, I really like that shit. And, um, it's kind of cool to have this thing where it's like, you know, it saves after you beat a level, so it's the thing where you could sit down and marathon this and have it be, you know, a decent length adventure, um, without it being overly long, and without it being super short for you to just blast through every single time. It's kind of nice to have a little bit more, a little bit more bang for your buck, I guess, and it's it's cool that it's more of an adventure than in the first game, which is kind of like a straight line you just go through, and and uh, you know, it's, it's a different feel, but I think it works well, and definitely for being like kind of like a, a, a handheld translation of Kirby's Adventure, it's pretty good. Um, plus the animal stuff, um, I like how that kind of adds a different layer of complexity to it, and you want to experiment with all the different animal buddies and the different powers to see how each one uses them and you know what's your favorite and everything and your favorite combination to use and what's good against bosses and good for finding the secrets and all that it's really cool um so a lot about the game i think is pretty fun um and as far as complaints i don't have many it really works pretty well for what it is and what it's trying to do um i really don't really don't have much for complaints except for the one big complaint i have i guess uh, I mean, oh, one more positive before I get to that. It does have three save files, so multiple people could play it at a time, too. That's that's cool. It says your percentage, so you know how well you're doing. That's, that's, that's neat. But the one big problem I found with this game was the idea of trying to get all of these different secrets. And not so much the idea of getting them, I guess. Just that, that trying to get all those little secrets is difficult. It can be difficult because you have to play through the levels and find where those spots even are in the first place. 
You also have to make sure that you have the correct animal buddy, so that's something you have to figure out. And also make sure that you have the correct power-up with that correct animal buddy. And then you have to, like, get there uh, with all that stuff intact. Otherwise, you know, you're, you're fucked and you have to do it again. And I found that really frustrating and tedious. And, um... And, I mean, like, it's kind of neat for a challenge, I suppose. Um, and then trying to get the true ending with that. Um, you unlock the final boss fight and, and all that stuff, which is also kind of hard. But it just... It didn't feel as fun and satisfying and simple like a Kirby game should. At least the way, you know, the, the reason I enjoy Kirby games, that doesn't really mesh with that. I mean... And to put it into a little bit of perspective, I guess, um, think about something like Dark Souls. If you were playing a Dark Souls game, and then um, you just um, got this item all of a sudden that gave you invincibility, and you went in and killed a really tough enemy, um, like a big boss-type enemy, right? I mean, that would probably be kind of cool if you just got that after, you know, playing a bunch of the game, and you're like, oh, yeah, this is really punishing and difficult. And then you just get this item that makes you invincible, and you just automatically beat this other boss. And, like, yeah, it might feel kind of cool, but it's really against the nature of everything that you've been playing. You know, it, it, it doesn't it doesn't mesh with that style. It's not that punishingly difficult kind of um, thing that you want out of the of a, out of a Dark Souls game. Um, not a bad thing in its own right necessarily, just that it doesn't really fit. And that's kind of how I felt trying to get these really frustrating uh, secrets. In fact, it was really mainly one of them that super pissed me off. Also, which. I, I knew exactly where it was and what I needed to get it because I'm an asshole and I looked it up. Um, and <laughs> even knowing that, it was still difficult to fucking actually do it. And it was frustrating. And it was the point where I was like, I don't want to fucking do it anymore. So fuck it. It's not fun. Why am I doing a thing that's not even fun to do? And uh, that means that I guess the game might even be more satisfying depending on if you like doing that kind of stuff or if you would rather just play it for fun. It might be more satisfying to just skip that shit and just have that other ending. Because it's not really that bad. It doesn't feel like the bad ending. At least it didn't to me. Um, it just felt like kind of like a, yeah, that's, that's all we had to do. And like, that was it. And, um, I don't know, it's... It, it, obviously there's a little, the end? And like, a, you know, a question mark character that you didn't see or whatever. It doesn't matter, I guess. Either way, I think it's, it's fun to play. I just think that that was kind of an annoying thing that... Um, I get why it's there, but I don't feel like it fits, and, um, it does leave a little bit of a sour taste in my mouth. Can you see this shit? Kirby's Dreamland 2. You know, if you're a Kirby fan, um, if you like Kirby's Dreamland or Kirby's Adventure or Kirby in general, and you have a Game Boy, Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance, whatever... It's a pretty fun game to have in your collection. It's a nice one. Um, I don't think it's quite as classic as Kirby's Dream Land or Kirby's Adventure, but it has a similar feel, and I think it works really well. Um, and, I mean, I don't know. It's If you can get it for, like, 20 bucks or less, I think it's a it's a decent price. It might also be on the 3DS eShop, I, I don't, and probably on the Wii U eShop, but I don't know for sure because I haven't really looked specifically for it. I don't remember seeing it there, so... Um, it's possible it's available there, but uh, if it's not, sorry, whoops, don't quote me on it. Um, and yeah, as, as much as that like little like secrets thing pissed me off, it's still a fun game even if you don't get all that stuff like like I did. And uh, you know, it's uh, what else can I say? It's fun. I also wanted to quick explain something though, um, as far as other Kirby games and stuff, and what I'm planning to do is that um, I. I, I've i reviewed some of these games already, and I do want to review Kirby's Dream Land, the first one, but um, I don't have a copy. The one that I always played all the time was my brother, so I don't have that. And um, once I get my own copy of it to play it, I'll probably review that. And it's stupid, because I probably should have waited and just done that first, but I'm a fucking idiot. Um, and, you know, I was trying to find... Uh, uh, Kirby Triple Deluxe, I've been keeping an eye out for that. I believe that's the 3DS one. Uh, that that sounds like it should be fun. Um, I don't have a Wii anymore, so I can't do Return to Dreamland or finish Epic Yarn, unfortunately. Um, I'm not interested in doing the Canvas Curse and Rainbow Curse ones because of the touch screen bullshit. Just, no, I don't want to do that. 
And um, that's why I'm wondering, is Mass Attack worth getting? You guys, leave that in the comments. Is Mass Attack a good Kirby game, and should I check that out? Even if I fucking hate touchscreen controls, that's what I've been wondering. And the one other thing I want to get out of the way, too, is that I did plan on reviewing Kirby Superstar Ultra, which is the DS remake of the Super Nintendo game, Kirby Superstar. It has a collection of all these Kirby games and all this stuff. And I basically wanted to quick explain. The reason I'm not um, reviewing that is because I tried playing it, I played some of it, and I just hated it. Um, I didn't play enough of it to really warrant an actual review because I just wasn't having a good time at all. And it felt like it was out of the controls were just, like, bad for me because there was, like, oh, you can, you know, like, you're very slow and you have to keep double-tapping to run. But, like, in other Kirby games, when you jump, you get more momentum when when you're, like, jumping. But you don't get that in, in this one. So, like, in Superstar Ultra, so it was like, I can't fucking, I can't fucking do that. <sighs> And that was annoying, and the helper system probably would have been fun with two players, but the helper, like, constantly, I was wondering, it's like, is that an enemy, or is that my guy? And he was doing stuff when I didn't want him to do stuff, and he wasn't doing stuff when I wanted him to do stuff, and he's flying around, and every time, you, you, you know, when you try to just, like, get rid of a copy ability, it just turns it into your helper, and it, like, leaves an item behind, and if you accidentally eat up your item again, you get the thing back, and it's really hard to just not get a helper, because you can't toggle it on and off. As far as I know, you have to get a helper every time you ditch an ability, which means you have to really, be really selective when you get an ability, or make somebody hit you when you want to get a new one to knock yours out of you and and i just found it really annoying and plus it bogged it down even more because then you have every time you pick up a fucking health item you have to stop so your two characters can make out and then share the healing and it was just really fucking slow and tedious and i fucking hated it and i'm sorry but that's why i'm not going to play all the way through it and give myself a headache because even though it has some cool looking ideas in it and it looks like it could be a lot of fun if i don't like the way it fundamentally controls at a, at a basic control level, there's no reason for me to keep playing that. But um, do look forward to, um, you know, Kirby, Kirby's Dream Land. I'm for sure I'm going to be looking for that one. Keep my eye out for that. For um, Triple Deluxe and Kirby and the Crystal Shards on Nintendo 64, if I can find that. Holy shit. Sorry about the extended end part, but I thought the review wasn't too long anyway, so... If you're still here and, you know, you forgot, there's also the... Written review at www.thegodplay.net or in the link in the description below. So that's everything I have to say, and I'm done.